follower. I shall build and not destroy. I will raise up a standard and not become the status quo. I will walk in the fullness of the love of the Holy Spirit. I have overcome. Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to another episode of She Emerged, The Manifestation of Me. I am your host, Shalimar. Thank you for joining me. It is, um, I don't know, it's an interesting day for me. I woke up feeling good. Uh, I had a, a very good weekend. I had a, I went to a, a great um, women's conference um, in Delaware and I'm just recharged, recharged, and re more recharged. So um, today I have an interesting uh, and maybe a bit controversial uh, topic I want to discuss with everyone. Um, I pray that it is received as always as it is intended, and I hope it stimulates some conversation. Um, I do foresee this as being um, more of a series of a topic. Um, than uh, you know, just a, a one-time um, thing. So uh, let's get right into it. Uh, don't mind me. I have two screens up because I have. I like to have my notes. You guys know how I feel about my notes. Um, uh, thank you all uh, for listening and tuning in for your continued support uh, with the podcast and the video blog. If you find this content interesting, um, informative, if you're finding yourself empowered and encouraged by these messages, please don't forget to um, catch the podcast on Apple, um, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Follow me on Spotify. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, s.h.e. She Emerged. Um, you can catch me on, um, on Google, on um uh, literally on most digital platforms. Um, you can listen to the podcast, um, catch the live um, videos on uh, Thursday, and then some replays on Tuesday. Um, and uh, I also believe it's on iHeartRadio now. iHeartRadio has picked it up um, as well. And I'm just excited for all that God is doing in this season. My book, She Emerged, The Manifestation of Me, uh, it will be out in a few weeks. I'm super excited about that. Um, there'll be uh, some exciting promos to go along with that for the book. Um, and it's just, it, I'm just super excited. I'm super excited um, for all that, you know, God is doing in my life right now, um, the doors that he's opening up. And literally uh, this platform is just a reminder of how far God has brought me, all the things that he's brought me through um, and that they have a purpose. And, you know, the things that I went through were not for nothing. Um, and, and he has just confirmed that time and time again. Um, and so I'm excited to be living in purpose, on purpose and with purpose. Um, I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement for who God has called me to be. I'm in agreement for the direction that he's taking my life. Right now, I'm in the middle of a uh, a faith walk, a huge, huge, huge leap of faith, um, and I'm just trying to stay the course. So let's get into this topic today. Um, we are going to be discussing the dynamic between Black mothers and their daughters, and this topic is important to me because I am a Black woman, um, and I touch on some of my personal experiences in my book. Um, as far as the relationship with my mother and how it uh, dictated and um, some of those experiences played into my overall development um, into growing into a black woman. And I feel like this is an important topic to discuss. It's oftentimes um, shied away from and a little taboo in the black community. Uh, you know, we, a lot of us grow up in homes where it's a uh, what goes on in this house stays in this house. Um, unfortunately, some of us uh, grew up and are currently growing up in environments where there is um, an overabundance of generational trauma um, that is just trickling down. 
and it affects us. It affects our overall development and you know growth. And some 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 things that I want to touch on today um, is the toxicity in it, um, and how the negativity uh, that just comes down from generation to generation affects the relationship between black mothers and their daughters. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some things um, that are not always okay as far as their sons as well, but we're gonna tackle one topic at a time. And today we're gonna focus on um, and open up the dialogue uh, for the relationships between black mothers um, and their daughters and, and, and grandmothers and how sometimes it just destroys us. That's a lot, right? <laughs> it's a lot to unpack. Um, from my experience, and again, I will always speak from my own personal experience, so it may not apply to everyone, uh, but this is my experience and I'm sharing it with you. Uh, you know, a lot of times um, these types of issues remain silent um, issues in the black community. We we are raised as young black girls to never challenge the elders and the authority. Um, it is do as I say, not as I do. Um, it is very rare that you are empowered to question, even respectfully. It is very rare that you are afforded the opportunity to express your feelings without um, being shut down and getting uh, negative feedback. Um, and I believe that it is due to black mothers being held to such a high regard that if you speak out about, you know, any type of mistreatment or abuse, <clears throat> excuse me, um, it, is also, it is often viewed as a form of disrespect. And as I have learned, uh, from being a parent, um, my oldest child is 23. My middle baby is 21. And then, guess I lost my mind and started over. Uh, but I had a, I have conversations with my elder children because self-reflection is good. And I wanted to know, listen, let's talk about this. What mistakes have I made? Like, what have I done um, that I probably could have done better? <clears throat> Not everyone is bold enough to have that conversation because there's going to be some things that you don't want to hear. But for me, it was important um, to hear their feedback uh, because I wanted to know. And no one is half the battle. And I have another young daughter that is coming up and I want to correct those mistakes or missteps. Um, and so I opened up that dialogue and I made it comfortable for my children to speak to me. Uh, again, about some things, some some stuff, honestly, as a mother, I don't want to know, but what I, I have to listen to them. And so I, affording them that, I believe, helped their overall development um, and has helped them thus far avoid a lot of things that I, I wasn't afforded the opportunity to avoid. Um, when I went to do research on this topic, uh, I, I thought I was in the minority, but oh no. There are a lot of um, conversations out there about this. Um, and my purview is a lot of times we as <clears throat> black women and black girls, uh, we grow up un, un, in, a, in an environment that is a little suppressed. Okay, a lot suppressed. Um, we, we are a lot of times discouraged. Um, it is very rare that we are, the goal, okay, uh, is for us to, um, the goal that's pushed the most, the hardest is career. Um, we are taught uh, to cook, to clean, be a lady, keep yourself together, hair neat, you know, those things, the basics. Um, are definitely there, but because of the strong 
patriarchal system um, that a lot of black families operate under. Um, young black girls and women are oftentimes taught that the goal is to finish school, master the skills of being a nurturer and carry your family. Um, it's very matriarchal, like you, you know, not career. Your goal is to find yourself a husband and sit down somewhere and have babies and keep a house and cook. And those are the skills that are glorified um, a lot of times to our black women and girls. Whereas on the opposite side, our boys um, are taught that they can run around and do whatever they please. Uh, they, they're given a pat on the back for, um, I mean, ain't no, no nice way to put it, but collect a few notches under your belt. Uh, they're held to a different standard um, than we are held. And there's a lot of lack and holes in the conversations. And not that it's wrong to teach us to be ladies and um, Proverbs 31 woman, you know, uh, it's, there's nothing wrong with that, but give us the whole picture. Um, our bodies and how they function are often left out of the conversation. Um, our sexual expectations and experiences we're, are often just us finding our way um, on our own. Those things are not discussed with us. So we're sent out into the world with very little understanding of our bodies and how they work other than our changeover into womanhood. Um, we are not given, afforded those conversations. And most times it's because those conversations weren't had with our mothers and grandmothers. Um, and so in that way, they send us out into the world naive. There is also um, the silent expectation that you must always be available to your family and, and have take a matriarchal stance and be a natural nurturer. Um, and some of us are just not wired that way. Some of us are career-minded. Uh, some of them, they, they want to go to college. They're focused on their career and marriage and children are not necessarily not in the not um, in the plan, but just the not right now. Uh, and you get the side eye for that. Like that's basically what you're here for. You you that that should be your goal. Um, and you know, crying and expressing our emotions, being hurt, um, those things are not explored with us enough. Um, we're taught to be strong never let them see you cry and push forward. Uh, but we need to be able to be taught how to manage our emotions, not just suppress them. We need to be taught and told that our mental health matters, not that it's okay, sacrifice yourself all the time because that's what, what we do. But that's not true. Um, that's a generational curse, that's a generational lie, um, and that's a generational trauma that is consistently being passed down. Um, you know, the language that is used oftentimes towards young women of color is often harsh as opposed to the way that they manage and handle their sons. Uh, the sons always, you know, have they become the priority and the girls take second, second place. So a lot of black mothers will go hard for their sons as far as sports and making sure that they're well-rounded and they get the things that they need. And I mean, a lot, they can go outside and burn the building down and their mother's going to tell you, leave my boy alone. But on the flip side, when it is a young black, when it is the daughter, um, she's demeaned. She's, de you know, devalued. Um, she's not encouraged. She's dismissed. Um, and that plays into how we view ourselves, And so we go out in the, while our brothers go out into the world with a heightened sense of security and value and, you know, I matter, 
we don't we don't often aren't often afforded those same encouragements and so our struggles become very different and when a lot of us go into adulthood struggling with our identity um, making choices that are what's best for us um, as opposed to making choices that are what's best for everyone or measuring up to the ideals that our families have set for us. And if you don't measure up to those ideals, then oftentimes you're like treated like a failure, um, an outcast, uh, opening your mouth, being vocal about things that hurt you. Um, we're often silenced and it's swept under the rug. <clears throat> One of the big things is sexual abuse of the black community. Um, and what the, what, what I have found was um, a lot of times when young black women come forward and say that someone has inappropriately touched them or I've been assaulted, um, the first question out of the mouths of those who are supposed to protect you is, well, what did you do? What were you in? Was you being fast? Was you being fresh? Um, you know, what gave them the impression that they could do you that way. Not a, uh, it wasn't your fault. How about their behavior was inappropriate? How about not victim shame and blame? And then how about not cover it up and make them feel okay with their choice to violate you in that way? How about that? How about we do that? Um, but many times they don't. Many times they will coddle you in the moment if they do at all. And the victims are still forced to interact with and see uh, and be in the presence of the very person that violated them. They will protect that person and dismiss the child uh, or even sometimes go as far as to call the child a liar uh, rather than deal with the reality that how about maybe uncle so-and-so just ain't no good. Maybe they have an issue. Um, maybe we need to protect the child instead of the adult. But in the interest of saving relationships, sometimes there are financial issues. Uh, the, the victim is also oftentimes re-victimized over and over and over again because nobody wants to address the elephant in the room. Uh, and, and the child ends up being ostracized um, and considered a black sheep or a troublemaker for speaking out and um, asking of what should be automatic for protection. Um, you know, many of us young Black women are, we can be vulgarized, you know, um, for our career choices, our marital choices, our personal choices, and it causes us to face a lot of hardships. Um, again, as I said, especially if it is a choice that benefits us, um, we don't have a lot of freedom in choices. Uh, to actually enjoy our lives. We're very limited in what we're allowed um, allowed to do uh, or told that we can do. It's not the prior, our enjoyment is not the priority. Um, a lot of times we are put in a position to where we have to help raise the children, especially if you're the eldest. Um, that is pushed on us. And, it, and, and if you don't, then it's you don't love your family. You're not, you're not, you're not being a team player, <clears throat> but those same rules don't apply to the sons. Um, and it can come at the expense of our education, our choices for jobs. A lot of things we end up missing out on opportunities um, and experiences because we are forced to uh, help in the household, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but when it's all your only option, um, it can be pretty damn, uh, you know, so, and then you watch everybody around you enjoying your, their life, but you got to go home and watch siblings cook food, do laundry, uh, help with homework. And if you don't do it correctly, then you're scolded and it just becomes a vicious cycle. Uh, so, and they make it hard for us to really go out and have a life. Um, it's all right if the boys go out and do what they want, but 
it ain't all right if we go out and do what we want. Um, you know, the black community shields and protects mothers and grandmothers because they are our elders and, and as we should hold them with some level, you know, with, with respect, but we are human as well and we deserve a certain level of respect, of uh, respect of person. Um, and oftentimes the community, the black community itself will turn a blind eye to how the daughters are treated because it is so common um, and nobody sticks up for us. You know, I myself, again, I'm always speaking about myself. I was bitter for a long time because I felt like my mother's family upheld her in her mess and demonized me for speaking out. I was a child. I needed help. Um, I needed somebody to stand up and protect me, but nobody did. They, in turn, demonized me, ridiculed me, made me feel bad because I vocalized that I need help. Uh, I'm hurting. She's not in a place where she can care for us or, you know, she's not in a place where she can care for me. And in the process of her being in her own trauma, I'm being destroyed here. Hello, I'm the child. I'm the vulnerable person. I, I can't fend for myself. Can somebody stand up and defend me? And they never did. It was always them making excuses for her bad behavior um, or her lack um, of parenting uh, or some of the things that I had to suffer and experience and it, they were swept under the rug and I was told that just to just be quiet um, and, and don't make trouble. But I'm the one hurting, you know, so that it comes, it creates low self-esteem. Um, oh, Lord have mercy, uh, self-loathing. Uh, we, we do develop eating disorders. We withdraw socially. Um, uh, but those things are not spoken about. So we suffer in silence. Um, and then if you withdraw, you know, socially, then you're looked at as being mean. Like, oh, she just don't, you know, she just wants pity or, you know, she thinks she's better. No, I'm hurting. I'm hurting and you're ignoring my pain. You don't want to help me. That's the issue. Or maybe you don't know how. Uh, my mental health matters, but nobody ever checked in. They were busy making excuses. Meanwhile, I don't have brothers, but my male cousins was running around, running a full on muck and they were celebrated for that. If we, the, you know, girls got into a fight, unless we were jumping on somebody behind our brothers or cousins, um, if we just went outside and got into a fight, we got our behinds handed to us. But if the boys went out and did it, it was okay. Um, but there's just, it's, this is this is a conversation that is just so often pushed to the side and not not had about how young young black women um, are often the casualties of their mothers and grandmothers insidious ways and their traumas. Um, we are often the first line victims of whatever traumas our mothers have endured, our grandmothers have endured and suffered. Uh, and I believe in their own way, they feel like they are protecting us, but it, it doesn't feel like protection. Uh, you know, look at the level of single uh, black women, uh, looking at the, the, the actual statistics, um, it relates to how we're often discouraged from even dating. Now you're raising me to tell me that I, I'm gonna be a wife, I need to be a wife, I'm learning, all the skills to cook, to clean, but then at the in the same breath, you're telling me, um, don't date. Uh, or you're so involved in my relationship and my marriage that it, I can't have a healthy one. Um, and boom, there it goes they're oftentimes overly involved um, in our lives. Sometimes it's them living vicariously through us. They feel like they can redeem something they lost uh, 
through the next generation. Um, you know, even as your parenting, telling you how to run your marriage, they feel like they can speak to our spouses um, any way they want to because they're the elder, they're the matriarch, and they're given those liberties to oftentimes do, do so because that is how we're programmed. Although the Bible says leave to cleave, they don't do that. Some feel like they should have full on access to your life, all of your life. Um, and I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's a fair um, assessment. I don't think it's a fair uh, rule to impart onto us. And I believe it, it fuels for some of us to just stay single because it's hard to manage a life and have your own family and still uh, be expected um, to be available for the family that you you came from. And that can be hard. Uh, you know, we are conditioned to learn these basic skills of cooking, cleaning, house cleaning, and preparing for marriage. And the blessing is those are great skills, but also as the generational norms change, it made it um, more comfortable for us to have more choices in our lives. Um, but it wasn't, it's not, it wasn't the plan for us. Um, and I think a lot of the elders buck against it as well because it changes, you know, tradition. People get stuck in tradition. Um, when, when we choose, again, things that are beneficial to us, it may not sit well with the elders. Um, they want them to live their li lives according, they want us to live our lives according to their standards. I don't think they really look at the fact that they don't acknowledge their traumas, so they don't recognize that maybe we shouldn't do that. Uh, maybe, maybe we should change the course of some things. Now, there are some who do, but there are many who don't. And then you have the, the young women that run out there and hit the ground running, naive, just running, um, trying to outrun um, those stigmas in those in the in their past, in their families, um, and they end up running right into something or someone that means them no good. Uh, or the rebellion. I was rebellious. I rebelled. I rebelled against every um, every rule, every stigma. I rebelled against all of that. Like because you know, like. I'm just not going to do none of it. I'm just going to do my own thing. Uh, but that wasn't good either. But had I had a healthy environment to speak my truth, had I been in a healthy environment to acknowledge my pain, um, to uh, acknowledge and address my mental health, if I was prepared with uh, proper conversations um, and information, I could have bypassed a lot of things um, in my life. Uh, a lot of missteps, but I regret nothing. Um, those things to me build character, I guess. Uh, but what a lot of Black women fail to realize is how their mothers and grandmothers are actually destroying. I didn't come to this um, to this space until recently, and I'll be 43 on June 28th. That's why sometimes you catch me, I'll say I'm 40. I'm trying to adjust to getting ready to be 43. But in my, I'm, I'm turning 43 and these things are literally just starting to align and line up and start to make sense. Um, the needy and oftentimes selfish behavior um, of our Black mothers and grandmothers is obvious by how, you know, so many of us, they, you know, how they, they, they seem to look for reasons um, to keep us on a short emotional and psychological leash. Uh, some of our, our, our Black mothers can be super manipulative and um, emotionally abusive. And under the guise of it just being, your voice being just disrespect. If you speak out or speak up, now you're being disrespectful. Um, no, I just want to matter. I want my feelings and my emotions to matter. I need for them to matter. Um, 
Because if you don't teach me that my emotions matter, if you don't teach me that I matter, if you don't teach me that my feelings matter, and you're only sending me out into the world, and you know, you're not teaching me that there's value in me, you're not teaching me how my body works, you're just telling me to cook, clean, and then, okay, you're going to get married, but you can't date. I'm not going to tell you how to date, but you, if at some point, some guy is going to point you out and you're going to say yes. And I'm now in a marriage and I don't know how to function sexually. Um, all I know how to do is cook, clean. I don't know how to be anything other than that. There's more to living than that. So I'm sim you're sending me out into, into the world to simply exist. And eventually existing catches up to you. Simply existing, it catches up to you. The mental stress catches up to you. The, the, the unresolved um, traumas and mental health issues eventually catch up to you. You're not sending me out into the world to be able to manage those things. You've really raised me to just be what you need me to be for you, not what I need to be for myself. You're not sending me out into the world to be able to meet the world uh, on my own terms, informed, because you've spent my entire life training me to be of service to you and my family. That that has to change. Um, you know, it pushes us to leave home. We run, we run, we run. The boys are encouraged to get up, the girls to stay. And then we run. And we, like I said, we end up running into something that we shouldn't be running into. Um, and we become victims all over again because we are so naive. And we run into a person with a predator's mentality. Um, and we're susceptible to narcissism, narcissists, people who gaslight us. Um, because we were not taught how to combat these things. Um, it It is literally just, I mean, there's no other way to say it, but like the trickle down. We emulate um, the environment that we're in. We emulate um, the things that go on around us. Uh, and because again, they've never dealt with their own personal traumas, they just pass it on and we become repeated victims of that. Um, uh, they don't, they didn't, you know, because a lot of, you gotta think about it. And I, and I take this into consideration. Our grandmothers and stuff didn't have a lot of opportunities and choices. Um, they didn't have the opportunity to pursue education. So they don't know that um, a lot of times. They didn't have the opportunity uh, to really date and have healthy relationships. They didn't. Um, black women, the, the struggle of us is more about trying to increase our chances at opportunity um, that we've been discouraged from pursuing because we're always engaged in ducking and dodging the negative remarks of our mothers and grandmothers. That was a mouthful. Um, if a young woman is not listening or not being compliant to what her elders have said, we're also shamed by the family and presented to the family as being disobedient or a troublemaker, as I said before, and everybody jumps on the bandwagon. The behaviors of our mothers and grandmothers is an issue that honestly just needs to be openly addressed. Now, I get it. Nobody spoke to them. I had a conversation with my own aunt. And she said, I couldn't tell you because nobody told me. Uh, but at some point, we have to address that. We're going to have to break that generational curse. We're going to have to stop that generational trauma and start opening up the dialogue and a more positive dialogue between ourselves and our daughters. Um, we have to get away from the immediate response being a negative and demeaning response um, to them because if they're not being validated at home, they're gonna go out and they're gonna be validated by somebody else and it may not be the best person to validate them. Um, the 
issue of being undermined by our mothers and grandmothers and painted as failures if we don't follow the career paths that they have set for us has to stop. We cannot live for you. We have to live for us in order to be healthy. Because when you're living for somebody else, that's a heavy weight to carry and an unnecessary and undue stress. Um, and being able to make healthy choices is necessary. Because if you keep training our young Black women to rely strictly on the guidance, which is good, of our elders and not be able to critically think for themselves, how are they going, to, how, how are we going to evolve? We have to evolve. So something has to stop. Something has to give. It has to stop somewhere. Um, and this is a, an issue that we don't really think about a lot. Um, and because it's gradually conditioned into us growing up, we miss it until we become dysfunctional adults. Um, this issue, it, it has to be addressed. And, and it's not to bash, it's not to discredit, it's not to disregard the struggles of our elders, but we don't have, we shouldn't have to bear the burden and the weight of their struggles and their traumas because we will eventually have to walk in some of our own. Um, and being able to vocalize my hurts, the things that bother me, um, being able to ask questions about life and, and, and how my body functions and how a, a healthy relationship functions um, those questions are not a form, should, should not be seen as a form of disrespect, but of our innate desire to evolve and grow and be better. Um, and so the goal of this conversation, um, today was to stimulate a dialogue and a much needed dialogue, um, about the stigma and the disconnect between Black mothers and their daughters. Yes, our, your boys, our boys matter, but so do we. And at some point, um, we have to start acknowledging just how important the Black female is um, as our male counterparts um, and the value in us and how important we are to the evolution and continued growth of um, our culture. It, yes, yes, we are nurturers. Yes, we are mothers um, and caretakers in the home. And, and it's okay for us to be a support to our spouses, because that is important. It's a, but marriage is a team effort. Relationships are a team effort. Um, and, and our value shouldn't just rest in that, because we can also be doctors, and we can be lawyers, and we can be astronauts, and we can be gymnasts. Um, and we can pray, and we can carry God's word. Um, we are more than just uh, pots and pans in the kitchen, cooking a meal. Um, we are your daughters and we deserve to be loved and protected <clears throat> and seen about as much as our male counterparts, your sons, um, and to be loved equally. So I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> uh, I pray that this is received the way it is intended. Um, I will catch you all in the next one. Thank you for joining me. 
Um, and I, I pray that, that you are encouraged and empowered. I, I pray that the conversation um, is stimulated and it be impactful. Um, have the conversation. It's okay. We got to talk about this. We have to break these things, these cycles, and actively. So don't forget to look out for my book, She Emerged, The Manifestation of Me. Pre-sales will start, um, I believe, June 21st. It will definitely change some things for you because I know it changed some things for me. Um, don't forget to check out my sister Tamita Brockington's book, Marriage is Not a Fairy Tale, at uh, tamitabrockington.wixsite.com. My sister uh, Lisa Tate Stevenson and her book, Have You Ever Heard a Butterfly Cry, at www.lisavtatestevenson.com. Com. Um, and I will catch you all in the next episode. As always, the sun rises and sets alone every day and still manages to shine. The moon rises every night alone and still manages to light someone's way. Be the light. You matter. You are loved. You are worthy and you are capable. Bye. More than a conqueror, I am a victor. I am a leader.